I'm Carolyn Holzman, and this is Confessions of an SEO. What you'll hear here are my experiences in SEO, both as an SEO and as an SEO tester. It isn't me telling you what someone else says about SEO. I practice firsthand experience to understand Google, and I watch their feet, and I do this through testing. Even if we can't understand the entirety of the algorithm, we can learn pieces that inform our SEO practice and are successful. So if you're an independent or agency SEO, I get you. And business owners or stakeholders who struggle maybe to keep up on the SEO front for many years, I was a local business owner and I understand your sense of questions to understand things better. So stay receptive and understand that as SEOs, we're trying to explain everything as best we can to someone who isn't an SEO. Thank you to Confessions Testing and Research Sponsor, the Dental Marketing Guy, Justin Morgan. He owns and manages a marketing analyst and service firm for dentists. Let's get started. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 48. I did a quick check, and man, we're almost at the end of 2022, and you know what that means. The Confession Survey, where you, the listeners, confess to me what you liked, what you weren't sure of, and more importantly, what you'd like to see in 2023. I'm going to be dusting off last year's survey and putting that out there. And you can find it on the Facebook page of American Way Media. Uh, it'll be in the description area in the crawl or no crawl YouTube videos. And of course, eventually, there'll be a short link that's here. And um, strangely enough, it looks like I'm already a month behind compared to last year. Okay, well, I guess rules of Italian race car driving apply. What's behind you does not matter. So I would like to get a larger data set than I had last year. So if you feel sorry for me and want to brighten my holiday, please fill out the survey and to give you an idea of the types of questions. They require the highest degree of, of uh, precision first. Do you want to have a season three? So you better answer fast on that one. So what's another one? Um, you know, like, uh, and I asked this last year, does the weekly format still work for you? Now, I'm a little divided on that. Um, I could go every other week, and then, then the part that, like, knows me <laughs> raises its hand and reminds me, this isn't like recycling, which is every other week where I live. And I literally have to mark the calendars or rely on the text that Austin sends out the night before to remind me to roll that blue card out. So I don't know about that, right? I guess it's all or nothing. But I'd still like to know your thoughts. And then I guess it's a shameless request again for topics, meaning I list out, um, like I did last year, I'm going to list out the different types of formats for the show. And you tell me which ones you like. For instance, in the first year, I did a lot of Facebook Q&A. And that's where I found a question on Facebook and I answered it from the side of the SEO. Like there might have been a conflict. So I wanted to make sure that the SEO understood that I got their concerns. And then the side of the business owner, you know, for the same reason. They want to, everybody wants to make sure their concerns are heard. Now this past year, there really weren't that many on Facebook that I could see or catch in time before they were hidden by other hosts. So I just want to remind uh, everyone that you can always send in your questions. I really appreciate that. And, you know, like, so what are some topics that you'd like to see covered? Also, another question I did sort of ask for sponsors. <laughs> but like, for instance, if you could sponsor confessions for as low as $2 a month, would you? I'd like to monetize this a little bit more. It feels like I'm playing, I should say, it feels like I'm playing hooky from school less to know that I'm taking care of the business aspect of that. And won't you help me? <laughs> okay. And finally, if you're a listener and you appreciate having me in your ear every week, would you leave a review for Confessions of an SEO on any of the platforms? I'll even send you a list if you prefer. And one of the best would be the one that you would use. Podchaser is one that I kind of like, but you do not have to use it. Um, the original host of the show, it's on uh, Anchor FM. If you go there, you'll find Confessions of an SEO and a little survey. Um, I'm sorry, sponsor button there. And review. So again, sorry about that. It's late in the day and I'm a little tired. 
So as I pondered this survey, you know, it kind of made me go back and read what responses were given last year and kind of see one, did I take your advice? And two, did you like it in a way that I can measure? The only way to measure if someone likes your, your podcast is, is basically the, the plays of the episode. Um, I know downloads and the rankings and all that kind of stuff play in, but I am just going for the simple ones. So let's see. Um, there were lots of responses last year that were saying uh, they wanted more stories about the different projects that I was working on, um, more SEO testing stories. And well, I, I think I did that. I, I mean, I think it's it would be fun to go back and count maybe the number of episodes that were about indexation. So if you're tired of hearing about indexation, this is your chance to tell me without making me feel bad. <laughs> you know, there was some interest uh, in getting some real interviews from real business owners on their thoughts on how best to be approached by SEO agencies and consultants for SEO services. Now that kind of interests me because I don't think and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'll give you my email. I don't think that there's any consumable content out there that's like that. You know, there's interviews of SEOs interviewing other SEOs. And, and with that being, I think, done really, really well, I don't know that anything I could do would add to it. But I, I thought, you know, considering things that do not have, let's say, as much representation for us as SEOs, either on YouTube show or podcast, that kind of makes me want to figure out how to do that. And I did one that apparently, the data is to be believed, showed up on the top 10 based on playbacks this year. And it was number six on the list. And it was also one of the highest replays just in season two by itself. And that was the episode I did with Ted Kobitis, where we talked about the sunsetting of the Google parameter tool. Now, that's, that's heady stuff for SEOs, for people who don't know what that is. That was um, in Search Console, there was a, a little hidden section that Google made available years and years ago that helped people um, create, well, it helped people tell Google ignore all these little parameters at the end of my URL. It's all the same content. And there's lots of different ways to say that to Google now that we didn't have necessarily at that time or the, the people who were making websites at that time. So it was a tool that Google finally announced last summer that they were like, nah, we think we're going to let it go. And they did. So um, that was uh, super fun getting to talk was first off a blast to hang out talking SEO with Ted. It always is. And he generous, generously agreed to explain why it was a potential issue and not a, not a positive one necessarily for a specific area of online. Now that was season two. That was this year, episode 15. What I also learned is it showed me that to record audio – edit that audio and recombine it in a meaningful way and finalize it in less than three days was perhaps a bit ambitious, but it got all worked out in the end and we all survived. Um, so I'll post a list in the description of the, maybe the top 10 uh, from last year. So, um, so I think I can say that your suggestions work out very well for me, which is why you're probably going to hear more about the survey between now and the end of the year. But don't get stressed about it because it's only going to be four more episodes, not counting this one. And you want to hear what stresses me out about this? You know, I go to Survey Monkey and it clearly gives me, it says it does, the ability to make a copy of last year's survey. But do you think the button that says copy this survey works? Uh, no, no, it does not. I even sent a message to the help to see if I could get some. And well, it appears I have to wait. So sorry, I'd give you the link, but I don't got one. So to make it up to you, I thought 
I'd share something interesting. And I, I wanted to share the November indexation test numbers. Ooh, right? <laughs> okay, it's not that big lottery number. All right. Anyway, so I, I haven't done this before, but I thought that you might be interested. And just in case you haven't heard, I've been doing an indexation research project for the last 455 days. It's all public. You can find it by searching in Google for Google Index Detector. And this is where test pages are launched with two unique keywords on them. One is in HTML code and the other is wrapped in JavaScript. And only time, the only time that Google can see that word is after it goes through what we know is the second pass of content where Google renders all the JavaScript as it begins to make what they call protocol buffers. Yeah, that's a real thing. You can look it up. But basically, it's where it normalizes all of our content to kind of all look the same and converts everything into HTML to run it through the algorithm and then sort things. So all of that to say, I went back over everything that got launched in November. And here are the numbers. Okay, there were obviously 30 days in the month. And I checked for each one of them for new content. Has anything been indexed by the simple keyword or anything indexed by the JavaScript? So simple indexing appeared to be off for 18 days in November. JavaScript, because it likes to copy everything, um, was also off 18 days. So 18 out of 30 days, doing the math, it means that 60% of the time it wasn't your fault if you had trouble getting content findable. I'll talk about findable here in a sec. So if you want to take out the weekends, you can do that, but I did not. Now, out of those 16 tests that were published, this is new content that had never been uh, introduced in Google. It was all published between November 1st and November 30th. So how many of these 16 tests show as indexed in Search Console. Now, Search Console, for those uninitiated, um, it allows you to kind of plug in your website, and then Google will tell you what it knows about your website. And, well, there is one section that says you can explore this URL, and it will tell you, is it indexed in Google or not? Now, what I found was... All 16 tests are showing as indexed within the Search Console when those URLs are inspected. Yes, 16 out of 16, which in my world, that's 100% indexing. If Google's Search Console tells you that it's indexed, it's indexed. But that isn't the full story. The next question, and this is informed by the research, because as I been doing this, I've been trying to find and read everything I can about what Google and Google engineers say about indexing. How do they describe it? What words do they use? And so that's where the word served or being findable by the keywords. Kind of like when you're in a library, if you can't find a book, does it really exist? And that's kind of the same concept of an index. I have a background also in, well, I wouldn't say I got a degree. I'm not saying that, um, but I for a long time considered getting one in library science. But anyway, so I was very, very um, familiar with the index in the library. So uh, the question was, how many of them were being served by either keyword? In other words, how many are findable? So for those 16 test pages, there's two keywords on each one, which means there are 32 keywords. And if you're wondering, there is absolutely no competition for these keywords. I have to, there has to be a way to isolate the test so you know whether it's happened or not. So there's zero competition for these keywords. They are absolutely new for Google. And, and that's the nature of testing. 
actual mileage may vary, but it will show you something. So for simple, that's where the keyword is in the um, in the on the page. Uh, out of those sixteen tests, nine of them were findable. That's fifty six percent. JavaScript, ten keywords were found out of those 16 test pages. So that would be 62%. And there's all different ways we can slice it and dice it. This is the easiest way that I came up with for myself. Very simple. And then I wanted to know, well, how many of these tests, going back to the beginning again, how many tests were served by both keywords on their page? And that was eight. So technically, I guess that's eight out of those 16. Not bad, right? So we don't seem to have a crawling issue here at all. Because if Google isn't crawling, there's no way pages can be indexed. So we also don't seem to have an indexing issue. I already just told you, 16 um, out of the, the 16 tests in Google Search Console they say they're indexed. So that's 100%. So it seems like at least in November of 2022, we seem to have a serving issue, at least for new content, because that's all this test looks at is new content. If I do a, a um, refresh render crawl and I want to see how long does it take Google to update that, that's a different type of test. And if I do those, I kind of keep them separate. Now, if you have any question about what I mean by serving or being findable by its keywords, I hope you'll let me know. You can email confessions at AmericanWayMedia.com. Well, that's going to do it for today. So remember to catch the daily crawl or no crawl reports, and you can find them on YouTube. You, you just have to search for crawl or no crawl. You can even put YouTube on the back, uh, and you'll see it. So click the link in the description if you want to subscribe and then YouTube will notify you when the new ones come out. And every day, uh, Monday through Friday, between now and the end of the year, is going to be a test day. I, I was doing it three times a week and decided that in, during this time of the year, it really makes sense. We need to have a larger data set for Q4. Now in January, I've got the dates set for the forensic SEO training. If you think you're interested in it, check out ForensicSEOTraining.com. You can learn more about what it is about and get um, more information if you're interested. Thank you for being a listener. Thank you to all the sponsors of Confessions that help support this work for themselves and others. If you'd like to support this podcast and SEO research, there's a link in the description. Please, if you will, subscribe to Confessions. And uh, if, if you're not into that, you know, you just Google anytime you want to listen, uh, you'll be able to find it. Confessions of an SEO, you can't miss it. It has been my pleasure to be with you. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the SERPs.